A graph consists of objects and the relations between them. We represent the objects by vertices and the relations by edges. If we want to select objects that are not related, we can color these vertices so that adjacent vertices have different colors, then select all vertices of one color. This allows us to solve problems where we can't select related objects. For example, scheduling, where we can't schedule a person to work two simultaneous jobs. Storage, where we can't store certain chemicals together. But what if we want to select objects that are related? For that, we'll need an edge coloring. Given a graph where no vertex is connected to itself, a k-edge coloring is an assignment of the edges to one of k colors. The coloring is proper if adjacent edges have different colors. A graph is k-edge colorable if a proper k-edge coloring exists. The edge chromatic number, chi prime g, is the least value for which a proper edge coloring exists. So clearly the edge chromatic number has to be at least as great as the maximum degree of any vertex in the graph. But could it be greater? Well, let's try to produce a graph where the edge chromatic number is strictly greater than the greatest degree. So we can begin with a graph with one edge and our greatest degree is one. This only requires one color, so let's add another vertex and another edge. Since this edge is coincident on the first edge, in other words, they both are incident on the same vertex, it has to receive a second color. But now the maximum degree is 2, so we haven't exceeded the maximum degree until we join BC, which has to receive a third color. And this gives us a graph where the maximum degree is 2, but the edge chromatic number is 3. Now a useful strategy to succeed in math and life, don't stop with the first answer. So let's see if we can expand this graph and produce another graph where the edge chromatic number exceeds the maximum degree. Suppose we add another vertex. A new edge BD would make our greatest degree 3 and require a color distinct from that of BA or BC. But we could recycle the color AC, so we don't need a new color. Likewise, if we add edge AD, we could use the same color as BC, and CD could have the same color as AB. And we wouldn't be able to add another edge without increasing the degree. So instead of adding an edge, let's add another vertex. So if we make CE have the same color as AB, then DE must actually be a fourth color. Notice that KN has chromatic number N. Meanwhile, K3 had edge chromatic number 3, but K4 also had edge chromatic number 3. Based on two examples, we conclude the edge chromatic number of KN is N if N is odd, and N minus 1 if N is even. Let's prove it. Suppose N is odd. While the position of the vertices is arbitrary, we can set the vertices of our graph in the shape of a regular n-gon. We can then color the edges using n different colors. Interior edges can be given the same color as the boundary edge they are parallel to. Consequently, an N coloring exists. Since every vertex only has N minus 1 edges instant on it, the question we could ask is, 
could a n minus 1 coloring exist? Since two edges with the same color cannot share a vertex, the maximum number of edges of one color is equal to the maximum number of disjoint pairs of vertices. Now if n is odd, we can make n minus 1 halves pairs of vertices plus one extra vertex. So at most, n minus 1 halves edges could have the same color. But there are n choose 2 edges, and so we need at least n colors. What if n is even? Note that we can form kn plus 1 by adding a vertex to kn and joining it to all the vertices of kn. We already have a coloring of kn if n is odd. Each new edge can be given the color of the opposite edge, in other words, the color not already assigned to an edge on the vertex. And so we don't need a new color, and we can't have an n minus 1 coloring, since then kn would have an n minus 1 coloring. And this proves our theorem that the edge chromatic number is n if n is odd, and n minus 1 if n is even.